someone would have like smacked us back into reality or something like that. It's just like, no, that's not possible. Get out of here. It's a meme um, picture that somebody makes on like their Smash Facebook groups. It, it kind of like, is, honestly. but it's yeah. real. It's real. Like it's 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 not a meme picture. The meme has become reality. They always say, you know, like don't let your dreams be memes. But here we are. We let our memes be dreams. It's the other way around. I mean, no, we let our dreams be. No, it's a uh, yeah. You... Reality. We let our shut up. All right, we're a small battlefield. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be Utopia and Ray that hope that they can uh, switch things around here. They did lose that uh, that winner semifinal set to uh by a score of two to one. Utopia and Ray knows a little bit about winner side about loser side runs. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Again, as mentioned, making that run to try to get their uh, revenge on Myron, but again, lost that grand finals. Uh, maybe not quite as frustrating a proposition here, having to deal with a Steve. But nevertheless, this is a uh, this is something that they've struggled with as Utopian Ray. I was going to look to continue those struggles, especially with these edge guards. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really interesting to see if Uh decides to go for like some sort of just two block stack edge guards against Utopian Ray. Because from above, that can definitely spell disaster for Utopian Ray. Because, you know, that LP doesn't have a hitbox besides, you know, him dropping the, uh... Besides Utopian Ray dropping the platform below him. On the way up, it's a little different on that front. You know, if, he, if Steve puts the right blocks out, that can definitely, uh, gimp a character like Banjo down below. But from the side, it's gonna be a little more interesting. Because I feel like he's might, I feel like he might try to put up some walls like that right there. But on the other side, when he's edge guarding Banjo, but the weak blocks come out first when you uh, when you're using your uh, resources, uh, you're using your resource management, Steve. When you have Banjo off the level, you're gonna get the weak blocks out first. And I'm kind of curious. Will Wonder Wing shoot right through the dirt blocks, but then it won't for some of the stronger blocks, or does the invincibility just negate some of that? Because I have a feeling it's the former. And I'm very anxious to see a situation like that present itself, if that does come around. But in the meantime, we'll just reset neutral once again, and Utopian Ray will put himself off stage for no reason, and won't have a Wonder Wing to be able to make it back to the level, so he has to use the egg to recover, and he does with no distractions on his part. And that really is kind of what we see uh, do incredibly well, is that they not only use their own uh, natural resources, they're making the opponent burn theirs, and now as Utopian Ray is going to, well, they're going to have them restore it at the cost of losing a stock. Makes you wonder just how much uh, they mind that, but nevertheless, Utopian Ray is just that much more dangerous now as uh, is at 130%. Uh, you gotta think that they're losing their stock pretty soon, but it is on, yeah, you, uh, you're not invincible uh, that for that long, unfortunately, Utopian Ray. You just wasted two of your Wonder Wings, and also you're dead. Uh, oh my God! Yeah, that's a that's that's a pretty good stock there from uh. My yeah. question got answered. My question got answered. The wood block it just totally blocked the Wonder Wing. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really surprising to me. I thought it was going to take at least stone or something like that to be able to set that up and block a move as powerful as Wonder Wing, but no, apparently. Apparently the blocks just completely stop it. That's uh, I, that's kind of that's kind of important in this matchup. I'm not gonna lie. That's a whole option that is taken off the table for Utopian Ray if he's not careful. Well, let's wow. be real. That uh, is probably for the best. So. Oh my god! Oh my god! That block almost like that block almost literally killed Utopian Ray. Crazy stuff right there. Beautiful, honestly, like beautiful situational awareness, remembering that he still had that block there from a couple of seconds ago while he was in the middle of a combo on Utopian Ray. And as a result, just got a bigger punish on him instead because of that combo. Down to last stock in the first game, Stu. This is still anybody's game, but he did just lose his sword. Oh, oh. Reed with the up smash, but Utopian Ray hanging back by that ledge for dear life. Really good stuff right there from both these players, man. They are all over each other, too. I'm gonna, this is gonna be a fun set. Oh, you already know it, man. This is just one of those sets where they're going to be, they're gonna try to pull out the most head ass options that they can possibly think, that they can possibly think of. Pardon the Phillyism there, but that's kind of what it is. The back throw is not going to, wait, oh my gosh. I yeah. thought that that, no, I thought uh was surviving that, but apparently he's just floating along just a little too much, and 
yeah, take a bow, Utopian Ray. You just put yourself up one to nil. Best of five situation. So, uh, not even close to being done with this one. We have seen them go the distance in these sets before. But, yeah, struggling on small battlefield against a very strong opponent. And, yeah, this is the situation that they were in. It took one, uh... It took one stock, and that's all Utopian Ray needed, quite frankly. Let's take a look at this situation again. Man, he just got the damage on outright. The back throw just killed. I, I didn't think that was gonna kill either. I'm gonna be real. It didn't look like he had the didn't look like he was close enough to the ledge for it. It didn't look like he had the percent for it just yet. You know, 140 is just about that little cutoff, I would say, at the very least, from you know, almost center stage like he was, but no, it, it didn't even look like the DI was bad or anything. It just seemed like it just barely killed. I think that's what happened. So, whatever. I mean, that's Utopian Ray. He'll take that to the bank, ladies and gentlemen. And he's looking to even take that to the bank, literally, as these uh, sets go on, as he tries to make his way to Grand Final. We're rocking back to small battlefield once again. I was saying that game was a fluke. I still like this stage. I want to go back here. I know I got all this distance right here. Stu, uh, if you have to take it, a stu a stu cated guess. A stu cated guess. Why do you think Oh decided to come back here? Why do you think he likes this stage? I think what you were looking for was an astute observation. Oh my god, you're a better person than I am. Like, I'm not even memeing. Oh, wait a second. I think we're going to... Uh, I think we're going to have to see how their, uh, how their connection is holding up. We saw a little bit of slowdown, and I didn't see a bayonet on screen, so no which time is a possibility. But uh, nevertheless... Okay, I think they're just going to fight this out. Utopian Ray is, uh... Ooh. Okay, so... So, they, yeah, they're just fighting. All right, Utopian Ray going to respond. Short hop back air right in the face. But, no, I do kind of wonder that myself to answer your question. I'm not really sure, but, uh, right now has been on the back foot far too many times. And it, Steve isn't really a comeback character, to be completely honest. That's one of those things that you're just having to suffer through the nature of the beast there. Um, you're usually trying to go with consistently annoying characters that like to remain steady throughout the pace of a game of being a, I mean, still listed on Smash Data as a nest main, kind of, um, kind of proving that more than anything else. And it's not really an it's not trying to be a damning indictment on them. That's just the nature of the characters that they play and a reflection of what they value in a character. They are going to get a diamond sword, so potentially a little bit better off there. But regardless, they're uh, they're holding the lead, not doing too badly for themselves in this game number two. But Utopian Ray, we've seen them pull off some ridiculousness before. Oh my gosh! Speaking of ridiculousness, that just happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the ridiculousness for you. Beautiful you with the forward smash diamond. 53% on Banjo-Kazooie, my friend. That's all it took, breaking the shield with the anvil. I was going to say, it seemed like he was. It seemed like Utopian Ray was getting a little greedy with the aggressive options right there, searching for grabs where he couldn't get them and dying because of it. But then as soon as he started pulling out some of the defensive ones, like, oh, read his own counterplay. It was just in his head every day of the week, and as a result... He's off an entire stock because of it. Now he's got to deal with he's got to deal with Steve when he's down a whole stock, and that is not a position that you want to be in, friends. But Kobe and Ray is going to try and dig his way out of it. No pun intended. Getting that diamond out here, tossing him back off the level. It's the edge guard. Or throw. Mm, no, oh, and air trying to get him off, and now he's got two stone blocks in center stage. But oh my god, not caring at all, and even throwing him in between them once again. The theme of the night, my friends. Still not mattering though, the percentage slowly taxed onto Utopian Ray over and over and over again. Like while all the while us still on its second stock. Really gotta close out that uh, really gotta close out this stock before anything else for Utopian Ray can really matter. Oh yeah, the blast kinda just lingering there, and that's going to take out a little bit of mutually assured destruction. Uh is going to take a trade any day of the week, particularly Thursday in this instance, but Gonna get the knock off of the block of dirt there with the diamond sword. And you better believe oh uh, wants this uh wants this stock before they lose that particular precious resource. Diamonds, they're uh, pretty hard and hard to lose. But they're not going to have to lose anything there. That is a two-stock victory. Or uh gonna build on that and yeah, that's a uh that's a character, Steve. 
That's a player. That's a short A sound, but nothing short about us gameplay. They were uh, looking pretty decent there. That was only a gold forward smash as well. It wasn't even a diamond one, but as of, it was a 90%. It's a very powerful forward smash regardless. So obviously that's not really going to matter too much. Beautiful stuff right there, man. It just... Now you see, like, this final one right here, man. Diamonds oh, are the best back. friend. You know how the saying goes. Boom. 93%. That's, I'm not 93. 53%. That's all it took for the fully charged diamond forward smash, my friend. You know, diamonds are Steve's best friend. And once again, coming in clutch for our man, like any loyal best friend is want to be. Some people's best friends are their spouses. Some people's best friends are their dogs. Uh, Odd knows that every kiss comes from K. He knows mm -hmm. that diamond his best friends my friend and he's going to be searching for them every chance he gets as long as utopian ray keeps giving him those options and he do okay right. Oh, okay just right out the gates with the wonder wing you know just to, to take that 40 percent already as the onslaught continues on hey man it's a mix-up it's a mix-up like hey i'll just do my most broken option immediately you won't expect it because only an idiot would do this you Obviously, know what it, it, it's only a bad play if it doesn't work you do realize that Back. that's the, uh, yeah, give him the give him the elite give him the elite smash mix up. You gotta love that. That's uh, that's some good stuff from Ray. But yeah, assembly uh, maybe required here for Utopian right if they're trying to make this happen. This is just uh, uh making uh, putting together sort of a piecemeal offense, and it's as cohesive as it possibly can be. But it's really just nothing that we've seen like set up into much of anything aside from that shield break. And some good, uh, some good stuff that we're seeing from the blocks. I kind of wonder how far in advance this stuff is planned out. And I'm not really even saying that to be you know, a jerk. To, uh, I really just kind of wonder because Utopian Ray has found their ways past this a little bit easily. I kind of wonder if a little bit more uh, forethought would benefit uh in this instance. I'm not really sure because one thing we're seeing from uh again is that Wow, I thought that was the anvil that hit him, but the forward air beat it? Wild stuff. That's Utopian Ray taking the first stock in this game and defending Did, oh, right back in was the, the Was the anvil hitbox not active at that point? I don't think it was. I think he hit him like right at the beginning of it before it started dropping. I think that's what actually happened right there, and as a result. But the thing is the anvil still dropped, but I maybe the hitbox of it deactivated once he got hit, but it still dropped because it was out. I think that's what happened. Uh, I don't, other than, if that's not the case, I'm not sure why that would hit him. I mean, I'm, I'm really not sure why the anvil wouldn't hit him right there as the uh, egg bounces below the block right there. My God, you could be racing pressing over and over and over again. You know, you figure, it's looking like it's a little bit harder for Utopian whenever up uh, puts himself in the corner because uh, that photo takes the stock. It's not like, um, it's not like Richter, what we saw before, where he just literally doesn't care about the blocks or anything. Banjo is sort of forced to care about He's forced to care about Steve's camping in the corner a little bit more when he's mining for his materials. His best option right there is just to sort of jump above the blocks and pop the egg out and sort of force a uh, shield at least, but that's only going to matter for so long. He'll still be safe in his little hub world that he created for himself. Meanwhile, Banjo Kazooie hasn't had a hub world in years. He still doesn't have one in this game, but it's not going to matter because that kill confirm is going to take the stock right there. Down throw to the up smash. Open Ray one more to go up in this set 2 one two. Yeah, but oh, uh, right now, kind of on the back foot, Utopian Ray looking to take advantage. This is not necessarily kill percent unless uh catches Utopian Ray sleeping here, and no diamonds, uh, no diamonds to be found for uh right now. They're gonna have to mine just a little bit more, but they're gonna have to spend every waking moment doing that and not really be able to get in Utopian Ray's face, which kind of have to think they didn't want to do anyway utopian ray maybe pulling the trigger a little early on the uh on the side b makes you wonder but this is going to be a no not going to be a re-grab it now that the uh now that the block is out important piece of tech to keep in mind in tunis and you call that out pretty early utopian ray not going to die from the f smash and the big body of banjo coming through yet again in tunis once again my friend and oh it's just I mean, he's got some gold to spare this time. That up smash is going to take the stock, but it's not going to matter too much when you're at 104%. But, Stu, I don't know if you remember, we saw uh, come back probably one of the most wild deficits we saw him early on against the Utopian race, specifically, actually, in what I think was the final game of their set before, where he was down, I think, about over 100% 
or around 100%, something like that, and he won that and clutched that out. So, as you can see, already racking it up to 74 already. Even immaculate at racking up damage, man. This character, even when he's down in the corner, no pun intended right there, as he literally is, it might not always matter, my friend, because the character not only packs on damage so quickly, but has a oh, 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 oh. It's going to be able to bring back that game from the depths of hell once again. Not as big of a deficit as it was back in winter semifinals, but nonetheless, he's going to be able to whip out that lava block and the up smash and win a game that it just frankly looked like he was not supposed to win at all. Let's take a look at our first replay of the set going on here. Forward air going to do it right there. I think it might have been back air. I don't know. It might have been weak hit of forward air. I'm not really sure. The Banjo kill confirm, of course. Now go to the up smash at that percent. And we'll take a look at this up smash that he got to even this game out in terms of stocks. Just way too aggressive of a wonder wing right there. He got way too aggressive with those that we mentioned earlier, Stu. Getting a little too happy with those on what he thought was Oh, his final stock. And then he just got another up smash because of it once again, my friend. You called it out, my friend. You called it out. He was getting a little too greedy with those Wonder Wings over and over again on the end of that stock. I think he thought since he had five and all oh, was the kill percent on his last stock. He'll just be able to use them, but... Uh. They, they just felt mistimed. It felt... They were so willing to pull the trigger, and you do kind of have to be, especially with a character that's as annoying as steven minecraft but at the same time you're going back to small battlefield you do realize that you're going to need to conserve uh maybe not even conserve those resources but you need to utilize them and time them out just a little bit better because uh that's where the mix-ups are going to come in they have the ability to uh make you second guess your timing quite a bit and maybe that second guessing would have helped you there in that instance just a little bit of waiting just a little bit of standing there at ledge maybe a little bit of uh maybe a little bit of a robot review from uh brawl leon if you remember that mark just kind of just standing there menacingly mm -hmm. at the ledge just doing a little bit of that even may have benefited you just because you're waiting on them to get to you you don't have to do anything if you have an option that's going to kill them you can wait to take it. You're doing just fine right now. And Utopian Ray right now, not losing any of those opportunities, sitting at 71% and going to tack on a little bit of extra credit. That was a lot of neutral interaction wins from Utopian Ray, and he needed every last one of them in Tunis. Yeah, I mean, dude, he absolutely can't afford to be dropping that kind of stuff. He's on what is potentially his final game of the tournament right here. He needs to be clean with these confirms and making sure his options are safe on the way out like that Wonder Wing was. It didn't work, but he knew it was going to launch far enough to the point where he knew that, oh, at the very least, wouldn't be able to punish. And now he's already almost lapping him in on his second knock already, Stu. The aggression coming out from Ray is second to none this time around. It's not showing. He's not showing nearly as much greed with the Wonder Wings as we saw before. Rather, he's just... He's just focused on putting out as many hitboxes as he possibly can, frankly. Crossing out these eggs, you know, putting out these F-tilts when he gets up too close, spamming those back airs up high when he jumps up to avoid the eggs. He's not even doing anything when he actually gets behind the walls this time around because he knows he just doesn't want to be pressing buttons in what would be his new created danger zone on the part of up. Uh, that forward smash is going to do it, punishing the Wonder Wing a second time. Hopefully Ray, see, uh, hopefully Ray thinks in his head that it might not be safe to use Wonder Wing from there. Depending on what uh, level of sword that uh has at his disposal. Utopian Ray. Right now, I mean, having uh suffer 117 points worth of, uh, I mean, for lack of a better term, extra credit. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's not really great if you're this Steve and... You're already kind of giving up a lot of weight. You know that one of those big hits is going to do it. Maybe Utopian Ray has to commit a little bit in order to get it. But at the same time, uh, you know, your Utopian Ray, you can afford that just a little bit. That back air, well, sometimes all it takes is calling out the jump. And Utopian Ray, well, they've never been one to shy away from that. They're looking for a game five berth here. Uh, looking to prevent that with every last block of their being. I love how uh, Utopian Ray made sure he had the egg in his hand when he was up in disadvantage. Not even just so he could throw it at that forward smash to knock, but because he knew that he was probably going to get grabbed by Uh as he made his way back down to the level. He wanted that sort of he wanted that sort of insurance, if you would, just in case anything happened. But he did get grabbed because the egg actually did break him out of it. 
beautiful Wonder Wing using that move as intended to cover pretty much any getup option on the platform as he still sees fit. As a result, he's still got about a 30%, 40% differential between these two players as the Wonder Wing barely not going to do it right there. If he gets Steve up to 114%. Now Steve's off the level, making sure he's got those blocks to refresh his invulnerability at his leisure, but that's not going to stop Jacoby and Ray from spamming eggs pretty much any end of Kazooie's do to make sure he can get this edge guard going continuously. Only 43% on Jacoby and Ray, man. This is... Game's not over yet, but it's looking pretty good for him so far, especially... Oh, I was going to say with the kill Oh, game. man. Go for the up tilt instead. Still anyone's game, Stu. This is looking... This is looking dangerous. Oh, and climbs the ladder. You got to respect that. The minecart is not going to do it. Utopian Ray is going to ride that Wonder Wing into game five. And that is an all too familiar tune for the opponents of Utopian Ray, who was looking for their second grand finals of the week. And uh, maybe a tournament victory. Wildcard is waiting in grand finals for one of these two. So Wildcard will be readying their wild whip for one of these two individuals. But Utopian Ray looking to not be denied. And Uh is going to have stage, uh, stage counter pick. Are you expecting them to go back to small battlefield here? Because Utopian Ray is showing a willingness to swing away and catch a... Uh, with these back airs and just how effective that has wound up being thus far in Tunis shouldn't really be a shock to us. Well, you know, I do a podcast with uh, my good buddy Dennis, who is a historian, and if I've learned anything from him besides the wicked profanities that he says on our podcast quite a lot, it's, um, it's that history does in fact repeat itself. These guys both really seem to love Small Battlefield for their own reason. I don't really see them changing out of this. I'm trying to think for a second. <laughs> I'm trying to think for a second as to where they would even want to go. Potentially final destination on the part of Utopian Ray, but it's not his counter pick. So, I mean, if it's on us part, I would imagine him definitely wanting to go to the small battlefield. And I'm not even sure if the counter pick's going to matter as much, Stu, as just the drive on the part of these players right now. Utopian Ray would definitely want that second grand finals of the week. But, dude, you remember how that set ended. You remember how that set uh, uh, for uh ended in winner's finals against wild card he sd twice so you yeah oh you know he wants that run back he sd twice and it was still an insanely close last uh stock last game set oh no. oh my gosh utopian ray really almost gave him the gave him that stock instead is only going to suffer a little bit of damage but really has not escaped the wrath of uh that's 50 percentage points that you really did not need to suffer and any chance that uh is going to get to garner an advantage you better believe that they are going to be willing to take it honestly yeah that's you you, you give a character like steven and she takes a mile man like that's not a situation that you want to put yourself in it was definitely a 50 damage that he didn't need to take at all sort of put himself in that edge guard situation rather than sort of got forced into it like uh you know all was trying to do but yeah it's a very interesting pick on the part of all right here i mean you saw right there that this could be stock right here in the up match I feel like this is always, you know, unless you, unless you're a character who you feel like is not going to benefit from a longer stage against Banjo. I always feel like this is a good pick against him because one of the main ways that Banjo gets his kills is through the Wonder Wing side, the of course, which kills off the side. Uh, but off the top, you know, Banjo loves to get that kill confirm as well, and you know, the down throw up tilt, down throw up match, whatever it is. And Town of City has the highest vertical blast zone of pretty much any of the legal stages that we got going for us in Smash Ultimate right now. So you know he's going to be killing way later because of the high blast holes on that end. So a Wonder Wing is still something he's got to watch out for on this end, but maybe oh, it feels like that's just going to kill him anyway, so it doesn't really matter as much. The stage is also made of wood instead, so you know those materials are not going to be as consistent or as consistently strong on the part of oh this time around. So that is one bad Ooh. thing for him on this stage. But that factor is going to do it. Side blast zone's relatively tiny. They're going to be strong enough to block that Wonder Wing at the very least, as was exhibited earlier on in this set in Tunis by your own very uh by your very own words. So something to be said about that, Utopian Ray. Kind of makes you wonder how fresh that is on their mind, however. Maybe they're not gonna be as trigger happy with that side B. And uh, well, as soon as you start overthinking against the Steve. 
that's generally where they tend to uh, take advantage. So, makes you wonder just how much uh, has been uh, making Utopian Ray pay attention. We, we've had a couple of pop quizzes put out by uh, this may well just be the, flying, uh, the final test. And Utopian Ray thus far seems to be getting the passing grade on Town and City game number five. And I don't know if this new tech is going to be in Utopian Ray's mind, but we got some pretty wild stuff that we saw before as that back row take the stock. He wonder wing, right? As Bo was putting a block down, and because he put that block down, that was technically new ground for him to go on, and uh, Utopian Ray, by the game standard, technically landed on it. So his wonder wing just sort of stopped on the block, but it kept going because it was, you know, oh? an edge. And as a result, he had the hitbox to sort of place around Buzz general zone where he was playing right there. Which is pretty wild. I'm not going to lie. If that's something that Utopian Ray keeps in mind. I think that's something that Banjo can definitely continue to use in this matchup. Oh, if man. he even needs to. He's at 140 on his second stock skill, but he's already got uh, all the way up to 72. This is looking like, oh, uh, potentially might not be able to get that run back that you know he also desires to. That's 60 points of that stock was literally just uh, running into those egg grenades. It's, I don't even know what to tell you at this point. That Wonder Wing is only to do so much Utopian Ray. The very last one that they had, it is enough to send them into Grand Finals where Wildcard will await. They are going to have a bear of a time against this bell against that belmont but this banjo earning their spot and uh simply could not do anything about the offense of utopian ray yeah you know i think this is part of where the counter pick didn't work out for him as much you know those side blast zones are not a fun thing to deal with if you're going to be fighting against a banjo you know there's they're about as tiny as the top blast zones are big but not as much, but you know what I mean. They're still definitely a smaller than the average, you know, competitive stage that we play on and competitive ultimate. So you know that Wonder Wing is going to be killing you just a little bit earlier as it goes on. You don't want to be dealing that. And it's sometimes, you know, you know, they say the old saying goes, you know, you give an inch, they take a mile. But sometimes all you need is a sometimes all you need is an inch. Yeah. To take it. That and that seemed to be the case either way. Uh, if you're this Belmont, you have a few more than you have a little more than inches to work with. That F Smash, it has some range. It covers a significant portion of pretty much every single legal stage. So you've got plenty of stuff to work with. And once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching DNA.exe, courtesy of Master Hand Gaming, alongside Nintunist. I am Mazer Stu, the announcer. Chris Lodian is in production, and once again, Chris Lodian.